Six liter trucks that are being used for a lot of heavy towing uh, can see premature valve train wear. Uh, if you don't change your oil correctly, you can see premature valve train wear. The cost of, and as you'd expect, the cost of doing a set of heads with twice the valves is usually twice as much or more than the set of 7.3 heads. This being said, that the higher RPM towing that the 7.3 is so good at down the freeway and pulling heavy loads for long distances, the 6 liter is just not as well suited to doing that. It gets great acceleration and pulls off the line nicely, but these little valves just can't stand up to the heat like the old big 7.3 valves. One of the other design issues that I see in the 6 liter as opposed to the 7.3, which makes a 7.3 a much better long haul motor in my mind, is the fact that around each bore, around each cylinder, there are one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Okay? Around the, each cylinder of a 6 liter is only one, two, three, four. This is just like the old argument. 30, 40 years ago between the small block Ford 302 and the Chevrolet 350. The Chevrolet had six bolts around each cylinder so you could, you could run higher RPM and not blow head gaskets. The, the Fords had only four bolts like this and they were prone to blowing head gaskets, just like the six liter. If you push a six liter and run the EGTs up, you run the risk of blowing head gaskets. And it's not just the fact that there's not enough bolts around the, each cylinder. The head bolts themselves on a 6 liter are what they call a torque to yield bolt. This bolt can only be used one time. It actually stretches when you tighten it down. It's a very malleable material. And the process of tightening, the process of torquing these head bolts into the cylinder head, when they're installed in the cylinder head, is you, you take them to 85 pounds you torque them to 85 foot-pounds in a circular motion, you start at 60 and you go to 85, then you go to each one and go quarter turn, quarter turn. You repeat that three times. The idea or the concept of torque to yield bolts is, is that they stretch and keep an even pressure on the head gasket. Well, I'm here to tell you it doesn't work real good in a performance or hard towing application because they blow head gaskets all the time. There's a solution to this problem and the aftermarket has supplied this. Automotive Racing Products has been producing bolts and studs for as long as I've been screwing around with cars, which has been 30 years. And they produce a stud kit just for the 6 liter. And you put these studs in and you install the heads just as if they were regular bolts. And instead of uh, the standard bolt with a, uh, the hat on it like that, it's a stud and it uses a, um, uses a nut on the top with a washer. The benefit of these studs is, is they are not torqued to yield. In other words, they don't stretch. And you torque them to, what does it say here? 245 foot-pounds with the Molly lubricant. 245 foot-pounds. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you tighten the bolts that tight, the damn head gaskets aren't going to be a problem. That's exactly why they did this. Now, they sell these kits for $500. $500, that works out to about 25 bucks a bolt in here. They sell these stud kits like hotcakes. I wouldn't even dream of installing a cylinder heads on a 6 liter with a blown head gasket without installing this kit. Automotive Racing Products is making a killing on the fact that the designers of this engine simply didn't put enough bolts in the cylinder heads. As I've just demonstrated, there are significant challenges in the cylinder heads and valve train of the 6 liter. It is what it is. We had to do a lot of research in order to take care of our customers that were having problems with these areas. And these were the conclusions we came to. You got to install the studs. You got to put them in. The factory head gasket works just fine unless you're in extreme performance or very, very large towing applications. It works just fine. There's no need to go to the expensive head gaskets. But the bolts are expensive. Doing a valve job on one of these trucks is very expensive because the motor has to come out of the truck to do it. So next time you're pushing your truck and you're running the EGTs up high and you're taking it right to the limit, think about having to do a valve job on this truck. It's a very expensive proposition. The electronic control systems of the 6 liter diesel is absolutely incredible. They had some issues in the 2003 model year, but it wasn't really the system itself that was the problem. The problem was 
the actual programming itself. They reflashed these programs and it improved the, the quality of the way the vehicle ran. But the actual control systems themselves, the PCM, the uh, FICOM they call it, which is basically an IDM in the old trucks, works beautifully. The electronic control systems in the 7.3 are tried and true. They're older, but they work fantastic. They're very, very stable. But the systems on the 6 liter are just amazing. The diagnostic capabilities of the 6 liter are incredible. And with the proper equipment, you literally can make every single sensor system in the vehicle talk to you. It's just an incredible work of modern electronic mastery. Uh, my hat is off to the people who designed that. The, the cost of maintenance and upkeep on a 6 liter outside of just regular mundane maintenance of changing oil and fluids and whatnot is significantly higher. Repairs are more expensive on a 6 liter. Let's take for instance changing a high pressure oil pump. To remove and replace a high pressure oil pump on a 7.3 liter is about a 5 hour job. To remove and replace a high pressure oil pump on a 6 liter is a 12 and a half hour job. This has a significant impact on the cost of the repair. Doing repairs to the 6 liter are much more expensive than on the 7.3 because of the cost of labor. Parts are slightly more expensive, maybe 10% more, but the cost of labor on most jobs is double or even triple because of the difficulty of getting at certain components. It's just very difficult. In a 7.3 you can pull cylinder heads inside the truck. On a 6 liter you simply can't do it. You have to pull the engine. Because of the proximity of the cylinder head to the air conditioning box on the passenger side, you can't get the cylinder head bolt out. It's a very long bolt. You can't get it out. As a result, the upkeep of the 6 liter is significantly more expensive than the 7.3. If you're going to take a 6 liter and make it go 500,000 miles, expect at some point to have to replace the engine. You're going to have to do it. The valve train design is not designed to go the distance like the 7.3. One of the places that I do have some good things to say about the late model truck, the 6 liter truck, is in the design of the automatic transmission. The stick shift transmissions are basically the same. They're just a little different because the bell housing is different. The automatic transmission in the 6 liter, the 5R100 with five forward gears, is a fully electronic transmission. There is no valve body. There is no uh, uh, hydraulic controls. It's, the controls inside the transmission are completely controlled by the powertrain control module. Con powertrain control module says open the solenoid, it opens and it shifts. It's just that simple. Whereas the older E4ODs and the 4R100s, they had all these other parts and stuff inside the transmission that could mess up and cause problems. The 5R100 doesn't have that. And as a result, we've seen 150, 200,000 miles out of these transmissions. It's a fantastic design. It's extremely simple. I hope that this lecture has helped you understand a little bit better about what goes on inside these engines. There are some of these things that are design issues that Ford has worked through in terms of the 6 liter. The 7.3 was based on tried and true designs, but it became a dinosaur because of emissions control. Two of the biggest things that you have control of that plague the 6 liter is the quality of the fuel and the quality of the oil. If you intend to keep your 6 liter for a long period of time, I highly suggest that you put the FS2500 or at least the oil guard oil filter system on your vehicle. This bypass system will filter out everything over one micron and keep that oil in tip top shape. That combined with synthetic oil, that engine will go the distance for you. Put a little Lucas in the fuel every now and then and that fuel will stay nice and clean through the filtration system and keep the water out and keep your injectors running. As far as the valve train and the high pressure oil pump, well, that's just one of those things. They've worked through it into the later model years and got those design issues straightened out. But if you take care of your trucks, they'll take care of you. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to log on to the website, PowerStrokeHelp.com, and on the main page, go down to where it says Ask Bill, and ask me anything you'd like about these trucks. I'll be happy to help you any way I can.